Hi, I'm Janet Mock. I'm gonna walk you through my everyday skincare and makeup routine. First step is my cleanser. I truly believe in like really being gentle on your skin. You don't pull, you don't tug, and you don't rub. So I'm just always patting and patting and patting. I learned that somewhere, probably in one of these beauty secret videos. <laughs> The next thing I like to do is use these little kind of power glow peels, so just kind of lightly. I started really struggling with acne when I was in the 10th grade, probably right after I really went hard and deep into my transition, you know, dealing with hormone therapy, I can kind of do a number in addition to being in puberty, right? So. It was just, I remember my first products that I thought I was so fancy about was <laughs> proactive. Um, but it was my starter kit. It really helped me have like a three-step skincare routine that like kind of anchored me. And so after that, I do this little feelings mist, which I love so much. And it has some peppermint and patchouli and sage and chamomile. And it's actually also for a really great cause. Um, is made by um, survivors of domestic violence. I put that kind of all over and I like the tingling sensation it has on. It like centers me, it helps me breathe. It reminds me to like be in my body and to really kind of awaken. I really do believe that what skincare does, it's really a great moment to just focus on yourself, reminds you like, this is who I am. This is my face, love myself. Here I am, you know, I have some marks here, I have this, and I just kind of just live with that. And the next thing that I love to do is this, use this little tool called from New Face. It's like a microcurrent tool, but you need a little protecting on it first, right? So I use this gel primer from them. I go all the way to the highest power. My favorite time to do this is usually when I'm watching some like really great delicious reality TV because I'll find myself lost in the TV and then also just pulsing my face and I'll do it for like an hour not even knowing. <laughs> because I've already done so much exfoliation, I really love this toner. I am really strict with myself on my skin. I think it's probably the one most indulgent thing I do in my life is not so much clothes, maybe jewelry a little bit, but my skin, it's like, I, I have to be very strict. Like, there's not a night that I'll ever sleep with makeup on. There's not a night where I won't do every single step of my stuff. And so I do my vitamin C serum. I like this super one. A couple, like one, two, three, four, five. I have a big head, so, you know, a girl needs all of it. But I also suffer, not suffer, I live with um, hyperpigmentation. So like I had this little, little breakout, so I popped her out a little bit and so she could get dark. So I have to make sure that I'm vigilant about brightening and keeping that all in without lightening my skin. After that, I do some eye cream. I like this one here. I also like to put a little lip balm on. So I put a little hyaluronic acid on. This is my little. <laughs> there it went. You know, I don't usually use that much. I kind of put a lot on there, but um, you know, as Electra says on Pose, I don't want a little, I want to be more, more jewelry, more finery. God, that show. You know, I remember my first day on set in October, 2017 and seeing that cast for the first time, being fussed over by all the hair and makeup people, the costumers, the DP, the lighting folks, like just seeing them be centered in that way, it was pivotal for me. It was pivotal for me because I had never seen it before. Um, and so to say goodbye to this show that has celebrated family, that has celebrated what it means to be different and to embrace yourself, what it means to celebrate each other in a world that often doesn't celebrate you. Um, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss writing for those characters. Um, but I'm really excited about our new season, our final season. This product here, I really love. Um, it helps me with my sebum, which I guess is what causes acne. Um, it's called Acne Stop. I just do like a pump of it. And it's basically my moisturizer.
And the next thing I do is give some tender loving care to my decolletage. I like this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It actually, it's, a, it's like a mask, it's a balm, it's a cleanser. It's for baby glowing skin and it smells delicious and it gives your skin this sheen. Being from Hawaii, I love the sun. And so I'm like always trying to achieve my bronzy sepia goddess toned Lena Horne fantasy. Don't forget Dorothy Dandridge too. The most important step, sunblock. You may not think you need it, black people, but you do. Growing up in Hawaii, I didn't wear a touch of sunscreen and I was crispy and dry. And it probably also me why I had a lot of those acne marks that it ended up happening. I think that when you grow up, you know, with acne, you never feel like your skin is good. It's always bad. And so I don't, I still don't think I have good skin. It's like in my head, I always just see like the little things I can't stand. This is the best my skin has ever looked and I'm really proud of it. I put a lot of work into it and money into it, but I do like the reminder that it gives me to love on myself, even with my flaws, even with the little things that only I notice in my mad head. Um, but I think it's a good lesson for all of us. I put little eye drops in. I love these ones that my best friend Wendy got for me when she goes and goes to Paris and stuff for fashion week. She's a really talented makeup artist and she taught me everything I know. I just put like one drop in there and it really, for I guess some reason, the blue cancels out the red. I mean, it makes my eyes look, or maybe it's just a placebo effect in my head, but makes them look so bright. And then I like to put a little uh, lip plump on to like set my lips. And I love the tingling sensation it eventually gives you. Oh, addicted to that. I just put a little grande brow on for these struggle 90s brows that I had growing up and I throw that all in there. And it's like a little hair growth serum. My little bridge, bridge products to bring it between skincare and my makeup routine. And so for my base, I like to mix Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer with Charlotte Tilbury. A little bit in here, a couple of like one, two drops. I think I watched some documentary with like the makeup artist Pat McGrath and she loves to use her hands. And Wendy uses, you know, hands on my face and her hands have been on my face since I was 12 years old. I met her when growing up in Hawaii and uh, we were in middle school together in seventh grade. And she came up to me <laughs> and saw me. And at this time I was presenting as a boy. I hadn't gotten the courage yet to embrace myself and tell myself my truth. And Wendy was just a mirror and a reflection. She came right up to me and said, I see you. I know who you are, stop pretending. She didn't say it exactly like that because she was only 13 years old, but it felt like that. The interaction felt like that. And she was so passionate even then about makeup and skincare and all of that stuff. And the first thing she did for me was my eyebrows. Um, and that is why I still have trauma in my eyebrows because the bitch took all my eyebrows out. But it was the 90s, so it makes sense. Those memories of discovering femininity together through makeup and, skincare and hair and all of that stuff is my fondest memories. The act of supporting and loving each other. That's what sisterhood is, right? Concealer. I like this Pat McGrath Labs one. I'm so proud of the uh, transformation of the industry. When I was growing up, you know, there weren't many cosmetics brands that were making, you know, colors and hues for all kinds of different ranges of skin tones. You know, we spent so much time at the Mac counter, not only because of how those salespeople looked, like they just looked super cool, but they also had a range of colors and, but they were like really the only that we could find or had access to in Hawaii. Um, and so I'm so glad that now we have Pat McGrath and we have Fenty Beauty, which I also love. Um, out there doing this, you know, important work of like inclusive beauty and making us all feel like we're deserving of having and taking up space, not only in the world, but in the little things like in Sephora, like at, you know, Blue Mercury, at any kind of makeup counter that you're in, that we matter and we belong here and we deserve to have products that, you know, reflect our range of beauty.
Mascaras that I like to use is this Benefit um, Magnet one. And I could do this all day. Like, it's my favorite step. It's the only thing when I'm in glam and get, like other people are getting me ready. I have to do my mascara on my own. I have to curl my lashes on my own. I just don't trust anyone else to do it. When I was younger, I used to love like a beat, like just beat my face. I don't want to see not even a pore. I don't want to see any glimpse of a skin. And I think it was largely probably because I had such like trauma from struggling with my skin, right? And like you think cover, cover, cover up and that'll help me look prettier or like I have better skin. But you know, when you take care of your skin, you don't have to wear as much. I'm not a big eyeshadow person, but I do like these little tools from Glossier. It, I like super simple stuff and I like to mix colors um, and I like to just kind of, you know, do a couple drops. So I love this bronzer and I kind of use it, it's a, it's a MAC. I like to use this Fashion Fair, like a deeper color. And I use kind of like a fan brush like this. And I just go into the hairline just a little bit to kind of create a little definition. Like my face, it's so interesting as I've gotten older, I realize how much I look and resemble my mom. And some of the things I got from her is definitely these cheekbones, which she still has, and my eye shape. And those are like the things that I love the most about my face. It's kind of nice that I can say that, considering that I couldn't stand how I looked when I was younger. You know, the struggle that trans people go through with their bodies, or some trans people, not everyone, but, you know, I used to struggle so much with just accepting myself and looking at myself and saying that who I am and how I am and how I'm presenting right now is the truth to me and it feels correct and it feels right. And, you know, today we're struggling so much with this idea of giving space, specifically for trans youth, right, currently under attack. It's disappointing that adults are using them as wedge issues, right? in political stuff and not knowing those little intricacies of the struggles that young people period go through accepting themselves and being a young person that's also trans trying to just navigate puberty and childhood and adolescence and all of that stuff and trying to accept yourself in a culture that's constantly telling you you don't belong and we don't want you here and so i think that messages um, and the presence of folks like Laverne Cox and NJ Rodriguez and India Moore and all of these amazing Black trans women specifically in media, I think really helps elevate um, the lived experiences that I think a lot of people are missing in this. I feel like blush and bronzer and mascara and skincare and everything just wakes you up. <laughs> But this for this is the MVP for me. This and the bronzer, it's like, those are the two things, for me at least in my head, are like, I cannot leave the house without those two things on if I want like my best face forward. I like to set it in with just a little, like a pop of cheek color. This is Jay Manuel. I just love, look at this color. And just... So I'm gonna set my under eyes with this Fenty Beauty MVP, another MVP in my routine. And then I like to hit my brows with like a one-two punch. Um, I love this boy brow. So that gives you a little like, give me a little darker, but not without like making it look like, you know, you have like Sharpies on your forehead. In the parts where I have the little, I like to call them my struggle brows. That's where I'll add a little pencil. So I like this Anastasia one. I just love how tiny it is. It's like it can be just so surgical about it. So I like to use this MAC kind of like, it's like a pencil and it's, you can just wind it up and, but I can't wind it up anymore because I don't have any more left. But I had to just show you all, it's super sheer. And I add a little, you gotta have the Fenty Beauty, like, come on, pop it on. 
And then of course, I've got to plump her up with the Lancome. My little uh, Glossier telescope. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was so nice to share this space with you. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Be well, love yourself, take your time, be present, love your body. It's important. Take care.